Welcome back to Uprising. I'm Sonali Kohatkar. On this last day of 2014, we'll spend the hour reviewing the biggest domestic and international stories of the year. Later in the hour, we'll turn to John Pfeffer for foreign policy analysis, but first a look at internal U.S. politics. By far, the biggest story has been the Ferguson Uprising, sparking a new movement against police violence aimed at African American communities. Also big this year was immigrant rights activists successfully pushing President Obama into offering relief to a segment of the undocumented population. The major portion of Obamacare was rolled out even as the law continues to face serious challenges and marijuana became legal in a number of localities. Gay marriage victories piled up faster than we could keep track. A deranged Santa Barbara shooter targeted women and Bill Cosby's rape habit came to light. In sports, the scandal over Ray Rice highlighted issues of violence against women and Donald Sterling's racist comments revealed his own virulent racism. The Veterans Affairs Department withered in the face of scrutiny over its medical care and the GOP swept midterm elections. It has been an eventful year indeed. My guest is Michelle Chen, a contributing writer at The Nation. Hi, Michelle. Hey. Now, I don't think that there is any doubt about the fact that the Ferguson uh, uprising over the acquittal of Darren Wilson for Mike Brown's killing was the biggest story of the year and bound up in that one story. But the stories of all the African-Americans killed by police, like Eric Garner in New York, Isel Ford in Los Angeles, John Crawford in Ohio, etc. How impressed are you, Michelle, by the persistence of activists to push media to cover this story finally this year? And do you think that the movement against police brutality will sustain itself? into next year? Um, I guess I, I'm not, I'd like to say I'm impressed, but I'm not even sure that's the right word. I think um, it's been profoundly kind of stirring to see um, this level of outrage um, played out on the streets with such uh, dignity. And I mean, to its credit, I guess the media hasn't quite let up on the story. And um, although some of the coverage of the uprisings in Ferguson have been kind of egregious in the sense that they're focusing only on um, you know, say the destruction of property, um, but not some of the underlying systemic issues. I think that continues to be an issue with the media coverage. But setting that aside, I think it's a pretty powerful demonstration of what communities can do when they organize. And I think it's um, a reflection of just how deep the crisis has become. And on the other hand, I think it's really defied expectations um, in the sense that maybe people who are expecting the worst, quote, the worst, uh, you know, riots or whatever, um, are actually seeing something much more uh, profound happening in terms of people getting together, um, learning to, um, I guess, confront some of these issues that have been simmering below the surface for so long. And I mean, I think police brutality, um, well, you know, the specific Eric Gardner, um, in Mike Brown cases uh, specifically, but police brutality more broadly, mm. yes, reflect. Right. Oh, sorry. We were just uh, missing your audio for just a second. If you can just repeat that sentence. Oh, sure. Um, I think police brutality was in some ways the spark um, for some of the uprisings we've been seeing in recent weeks, but I also think that it's a reflection of um, a, a, a real um, sense of alarm and, and disenchantment that people have with a system that allows black life to be devalued on multiple levels, not just at the hands of law enforcement, that's definitely part of it, but, you know, this goes back to Trayvon Martin and Stand Your Ground, and, um, you know, we saw the first sparks of that, and if you take the long view of this, I mean, Ferguson is really just the tip of a very big iceberg. Right. 